because we should not grieve as those who are without hope because we have this hope we have this faith we have this knowledge that we shall see him So, Father God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you because we are not mourning a life that is lost. We are celebrating a life that was shared. Thank you, O oh God, for sharing him with us. Thank you, O oh God, for whatever portion of the journey you've allowed us to share with him. And now, O oh God, we will just commend this family into your keeping, into your care, that they look forward to that day when they shall see their loved one again. Thank you, O oh God, for everything that you've done already done for us. Thank you, God, for the great and mighty work that you continue even now to do in us. And then most of all, O oh God, we thank you and we praise you in advance because we know that there are yet many magnificent works that you are yet facing to do through us even beginning today. We thank you for all of these things. Only in the mighty name of Jesus, the majesty of the magnificent, the majestic and even the miraculous name of Jesus the Christ we pray. And all God's children, the saints of God, the believers who receive this prayer of God today.
children of Brother Corey Pender as we speak. And to those who have come to celebrate the life of Brother Corey, we're so grateful to have you here in the Shiloh Sanctuary with us on this morning. We thank God for the presence of our Pastor Emeritus Bishop Calvin Wood Sr. We thank God for the ministerial staff of this church. And we thank God for all of the deacons, trustees, ushers, the choir, and these host of musicians friends of mine, and even home folk and kin folk as the inside, that are here today. And of course, we thank God for our own minister of music, and all of you that represent, and all of my shallow rights, y'all know where y'all are. Amen. I love everybody. In moments like these, you don't know what to say, but you know who to talk to. And you know who to talk to, he'll give you what to say in a moment like this. I want to go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 4, beginning at verse number 16, and do something I never do, and that is preach from two texts, but it makes sense in a moment. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and 16 says these words, For which cause we faint not? Though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For a light affliction is which is but for a moment working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Jump to chapter 5 and verse 1. That's all I want to use. For we know. But if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, yeah. we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Yeah. Yeah. 
I want to talk this morning from these words of encouragement to you today. Uh, it's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. A guarantee implies that someone is making a promise to someone else. That whatever they say is really going to happen. Whenever you see a commercial, read a catalog, magazine, or see an advertisement of some sort, it gives you a distinct promise that you can expect it as its promise. Moreover, if it's not what you request or it doesn't fulfill your request or the item does not look like what you requested, you could trade it out, take back the item, or receive a refund from the return of an item. I must contend that it is a guaranteed fact that we spend so much time and energy focusing on the outward appearance that we neglect the internal appearance. Yeah. Plastic surgery surgeons does nips and tucks yeah. on parts of the body that looks bad or not so bad. Detoxing our bodies to fit dresses and suits going to the gym to get our bodies together so that we can flex and look good and have a hot boy, a hot girl summer. The reality of the matter is that we spend so much time on our earthly body that we neglect our eternal body. It's a guarantee from the guarantor that we got to trade off these bodies and put on something. Trade off mortality and put on immortality. Trade off corruption and put on incorruption. Trade off this earth and put on eternity. We trade off to put on. The Bible says put off the old man and put on the new man. That's where the church at Corinth was at. Wondering about how were they going to deal with the intense persecution and death that awaited them. They assumed that once you died, that was it. They assumed that once you died, that once you died, it's all done. But there is a perspective that Paul paints to us today. That we return, give back to the statement of which the chapter of which we are in today begins. But he says that we do not lose heart. We do not faint. We do not give up. Why do we not faint? Why do we not give up? Why do we not lose heart? Because here's the sermon in one sense that I want to give you that greater is not just experienced on earth, but greater can be experienced in eternity. Yeah. I just said greater is not experienced just on earth, but greater is experienced in eternity. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. It's a guarantee. What's the guarantee? The guarantee, first of all, teaches us today that the guarantee is, first of all, that the body got parts. The Bible says, though our Lord have mercy, outward man perish, the inner man is renewed day by day. Paul was continuously and comparing the temple with the eternal. He says, though our outward man is perishing, he says, on the outside is your way and decay. His body was wearing down, his energy was depleted, his steps was getting shorter, the toils and struggles of life have gotten him to this point. And I want to tell you, my brothers and sisters, all of us, regardless of our age of stay, from the youngest to the eldest, will get to a point where what once was will be no more. We will all get to that point where we should do it so much one minute and life will bring you down. Because on the outside, Paul was suffering. On the outside, he experienced Peter. On the outside, he experienced pain. And likewise, on the outside, we look at Corey's life. You'll discover that Corey suffered. Corey dealt with internal pain. Corey dealt with eternal sickness. But although his outward body perished and wasted, 
God. Yet in my flesh shall I see God. If I shall see for myself, my eyes shall behold. Not enough. So this body got some problems. Oh, but 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 here's another shout. It's a guarantee that this body has problems, but then another shout is the body has a period for the problems. Wait, where is that? Because verse 17, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. So Paul knew that nothing in this life was permanent and fair. Paul knew that the hardships in which he endured was a slight and light moment. Afflicted in comparison to how long he would enjoy God's presence. Now, Paul did not write this as a kindergartner in the school of suffering. He was writing with experience. I discovered that in life, experience teaches you the good, the bad, the ugly, and the not so ugly. And Paul suffered in prison. He suffered some beat. Suffer shipwrecks and snake bites. Yes, Shepherd robbers and peril and, and nakedness and weariness. Yes, but at the end of it all, yeah. he came to one good conclusion. Mm -hmm. It's only for a moment. Let me say that one more time. Suffer the prison, suffer the beaters, shipwrecks, snake bites, robbers, peril, being cold, naked, and weary. But at the end of it all, mm -hmm. he came to the conclusion that it's only for a moment. I don't know who I'm talking to in here this morning. I don't know who's watching this morning, but I want to tell you that everything that you're facing in this place is only for a moment. Oh yes, the grief that you're carrying and, and holding on to is only for a moment. Car trouble and no transportation is only for a moment. Financial trouble, no credit, no credit and financial issues is only for a moment. Health issues, health scare, other issues with your body is only for a racism, sexism, economic disparity, and systemic injustice is only for a moment. As athletic as Carl Ross, he had a moment. As a valiant and victorious Marine that said, Who are? It was only for a moment. As a creative and innovative hairstyle that made sure that somebody's hair was laid down and even to the side, it was only for a moment. And Corey had struggles, sickness, and sorrows, but they were only for a moment. Everything that you go through, I go through, and any of you online go through is only for a moment. But I want to tell you that you may be going through right now for a moment, but don't focus on the moment. Focus on the fact that even though it is for a moment, the psalmist said, weeping may endure for a night, but joy will come in the morning. Is there anybody in here saying, yeah, I'm crying right now. My heart is heavy right now. I'm grieving right now. But in the morning, I feel all right. I'm true. I'm true. The problem, the body has problems. Then the body has a period for the problems, but then after all of this, it's a guarantee that this body has another place. I told you this body has problems. This body has a period for the problems, but this body has another place. That sounds a good. That sure another place. Yeah, this body got problems. This body has a period for the problems. But here's a shout, the body has another place. Some of us tell you everything must change. Change is to be expected. Change is inevitable. Because in this life and in this world, everything has to change. What was the price in 1950 for gas? In 2023 has changed. In this world, inflation has caused prices to go up. In this world, politicians are making unjust policies against the marginalized and minorities in America. In this world, police and white supremacists are hunting down minorities as though it is hunting season. In this broad world, we got pain, pressures, problem, persecution, and etc. The troubles of this world are an extremely light burden compared to eternal world. 
great of glory. But that which is eternal and permanent cannot be seen, touched, and measured. That's why Paul said we walk by faith and not by sight. Through the eyes of faith, we got to take our eyes off of this world and put our eyes on another world. Because truth be told, this world is not our home. We're just sick forever. Now stop out on my way home and tell you tonight that we get sick on this side. But on the other side, we got a body that has no sickness. We struggle on this side. But we got strength on the other side. We are in pain on this side. But we got peace on the other side. We are broken, busted, and disgusted on this side. But we got a blessing waiting on us on the other side of through. That that goes up will eventually come down. That which can walk past will end up walking slow. That which was in our mouth that was up to 92 to over 162 will one day end up becoming two or partial. But the shock is, we got another building. Not made with hands eternal in the heavens. Now it's coming to tents will go up and tents will come down. Tents are only temporary because they provide a temporary dwelling. But after we suffered a while, we could thank God that Paul said, if our earthly house of this tabernacle or this tent is dissolved, we got another building not made by hand. And I don't know who I'm talking to up in here this morning, but you ought to thank God that you got another building. And when you got that other building, it's a mansion without a mortgage. It's a house without bills. It's a body without the pain. And suffering God in the world. That's why the hear by the same time is still the stretch transition. Not a let the move get set. Build your hopes up for things eternal. And hold on to God's own change in here. It reminds me of the story told of this son. 
to, but we can have some church in here. That's what it's all about when a saint go home. You celebrate. Let's go and celebrate Juneteenth right now. Little folks are celebrating the whole month, but through it all, we got something to celebrate. Thank God for the life of Brother Cora Pemmer. Will you bow your heads as we go forth in this memorial liturgy for just a moment? Please bow your heads. Into your hands, Father of mercy, we commend our brother. Corey Pender is assured of certain hope that together all who died in Christ, he will rise with him on the last day. Give thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Corey in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of your fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn to us and listen to our prayer. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, to comfort one another with assurance of faith until we meet in Christ and with you and with our brother forever we ask this through Christ our Lord and everybody say amen. amen. Let's pray again. Father of God, Lord of all creation, you desire that nothing redeemed by your son will ever be lost and that the just will be raised up on the last day. Comfort us today with the word of your promise as we return the ashes of our brother to the earth. Grant Corey Pender a place of peace and rest. Where the world of dust and ashes have no dominion. Confirm us in our hope that he will be created anew on the day when you will raise him up in glory to live with you and all the saints forever and ever. Everybody said amen. amen. Let us recite the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. In the words of what David said about his son after his son died, and he prayed so much that his son will return. He came to the conclusion of this, my son may not come back to me, but one day I will go to where he is, and be a consolation family to know he may not come back to us, but in a dream, in a memory, in a picture, or a random text we once looked at, but he will, we will one day go back to where he is, be a comfort, and know that all is well. Amen? Amen. Amen. As everybody else stand, the family should remain seated for just a moment. We're going to come and shake your hands, and I'm going to give the benediction, and of course, after we recess, the family can walk out, and we can be able to shake hands. In the city, in the city, in the uh, uh. Hey, y'all get what I'm saying. Amen. 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 But stay encouraged, family, and know that God is with you every step of the way. We love you all. We're praying for you. And we know that God is going to be with you through this time. And wherever we know, God is with us. And he's always standing by. No need to cry. Our God is always standing by. Because one day we're going up young to be with our Lord. If anybody asks you, where are we going? We're going up here. Receive this benediction of your life. May the peace of God surpass all understanding. Bless your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus.